Hey, this video is to update you on um, my disassociation letter. Uh, I did a video a while back about my disassociation letter that I turned in. I call it my packet because it was, you know, yay sick. And <clears throat> um, I did a video on that. Um, I turned that into my um, local congregation, my congregation. November uh, 2012. Last night, I received a call from uh, an elder in the congregation that I used to attend. Very sweet fella, um, old, older fella, precious as can be, um, telling me that he has my letter, and it states that I no longer want to be a Jehovah's Witness, and, and is this true, and, and do I still feel this way? <laughs> and I said, yes, that's true, and yes, I still feel this way. And he said, okay, okay, well, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to hold on to this then for a few days, and then, you know, I'll give this to the brothers, over to the brothers. I didn't ask him what that meant because, honestly, I was just so shocked that I was receiving this call, um, like, almost two and a half years after the fact. And, um, okay. I can only assume that what he means is that he's going to hand it over to the brothers so that they can announce that I'm no longer a Jehovah's Witness at the hall. You know, I guess that's what they do for a disassociation. But the reason that they did not, um, I should backtrack and I should tell you that when I turned in my disassociation packet, it was rejected by the brothers because I addressed it incorrectly and I wrote it to, you know, dear Watchtower Bible and track. And apparently that is not correct. I was supposed to address it brothers in the hall or to the congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses or I don't even remember. It's, but I addressed it wrong and therefore the, the brothers, um, got word back to me that I addressed it incorrectly and they were unfortunately not going to be able to accept that. And if I wanted to submit a letter of disassociation, I would have to redo it and readdress it, readdress it in a different way to whatever their specifications were at the time. I don't know. I don't remember. But So all this time, I you know I was not disassociated, but I I didn't even want to do that that letter initially. I hadn't intend to, except for outside pressure, you know, forced my hand to even submit a letter because I don't have to submit anything. I I can do whatever I want to do, and and that was my intent. Um, but I caved in to family pressure to do this. So you know, okay, I I I did that. Um, I did it once, and and I actually put a lot of work into it, and I copied, you know, a lot of information out of the various publications so that everything I said in that disassociation, disassociation letter was backed up by publications, photocopied, and attached to. <clears throat> so, um, you know, I did that once, and I was not, I was not going to do that again. So, um... I just dropped it at that point. And um, so I think it's kind of funny that two and a half years later, nobody cares who I addressed it to. It's like, oh, okay, we have your letter. We're going to handle this. <laughs> I think it really correlates with the fact that my YouTube channel has been discovered by my family and I'm sure have been alerted the congregation, the elders, about the fact that I have this channel. And now it doesn't matter who the heck I addressed it to. They'll take it. <laughs> and the reason for that 
is because they know that I'm a person who speaks out. And they don't want any of their brothers and sisters, any of their flock, their congregants, to speak with me. So the only way to shut me up is to get their members to, to be afraid of me and, um, and to label me. And so that's why they're eager all of a sudden, two and a half years later, almost two and a half years later, to put this label of disassociation on me. No second letter required, suddenly. So, make of it what you will. But I just thought I would share this with you guys and let you know <laughs> what is happening. So that's it. I'm just sharing and take care. Talk to you later.